Welcome to another episode of On the Edge of Tech. I'm Dean Irwin and I'm joined by Tim Humphrey Davies, CEO of Pinnacle. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Dean. Tim, um, lockdown. It's been long. I know that you are a very active guy. You enjoy your running, your swimming, your cycling. How have you managed to cope? I think the same as everybody, you know, the first three weeks was tough, uh, a lot of innovation in the garden. Um, and then the, the second, uh, you know, the sort of second section of uh, lockdown five was tough, you know, those two weeks. It's a lot of stationary bike riding, pool swimming. Uh, it was tough, but work was, was busy. So I think uh, along with everyone else, it was, you know, it was quite a challenging time, but we came through it okay. I think we're fine. Excellent. Well, you look healthy. So yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Tim, talking about business um, and obviously you know, COVID-19, you and I have, have chatted quite extensively about this offline, you know, sort of over time, but um, how has this impacted Pinnacle? Has, has there been a big impact on your business? Yeah, I think everybody has. I mean, it can't not impact you. I think, um, you know, the sector has been reasonably robust um, and, um, you know, we were fortunate to get an essential services license um, you know, pretty much from day one and our, our logistics team has been amazing. So we, we were trading um, the run rate type projects, uh, the run rate type stock was obviously not running out the door. Um, a lot of our resellers were closed, but um, we did have a number of large orders rolling over from March that went into to April that we were able to do it. So we got to about 60% of our normal revenue, but we had one or two of those were, were large projects that had already sort of been kicked off and those end customers were essential services companies like Sasol, and Escom and those kind of guys. So I think um, the team pulled together well. We kind of knew, you know, we were very fortunate. We had a dynamic IT uh, department and we managed to get everybody up. We had about, you know, we've got 450 guys uh, on you know, our VPN and it's functioned pretty uh, robustly. So we've been very fortunate in that regard. Second phase of lockdown uh, was easier. Level four was a lot easier. Um, we began to see some run rate coming back and then the sort of pent up demand once level three uh, was, uh, you know, was kicked off from one May or um, was, was slightly better. And we started to see a lot of the, the normal reseller type uh, business. Some sectors have obviously been decimated. Hospitality, you know, point of sale, it's just, it's terrific to watch. Um, so I really do feel for a lot of those guys. Uh, it's, it's, it's really tough and it's arbitrary. You know, you, you, couldn't, you, you couldn't have predicted yeah. it. So it's tough for a lot of the guys and we're there. Wherever we can be, we've tried to support, you know, ex payment extensions and, and what have you. And of course, some of the, the deals that we have have all been canceled. So, you know, um, mm. brief summary, not too bad. Parts of our business have, have hurt badly, um, but overall, okay. Um, you know, sort of, we, we've seen obviously almost one of the biggest experiments in terms of uh, working from home, uh, where you know, sort of the whole country is uh, was forced to work from home. Do you foresee this creating some sort of cultural change um, in the future yeah. of of how Pinnacle um, you know operates from a human resources point of view? Yes, I mean. It's interesting now, you know, we've got a, a return to work plan and uh, the team, especially the HR team have been very dynamic in, in, in complying with the regulations and obviously being part of Alviva Group and, and, you know, we've had a lot of visibility and a lot of assistance in that regard. So they move pretty swiftly. But what's interesting now is that when we do, and we've taken a kind of view that it's optional at the moment, certain teams have, have, have opted not to be at work and they feel that their efficiency is greater. So I think, yes, cultural shift from jobs that enable you to work from home, definitely. Um, there are certain jobs, you know, we found some of the jobs, you know, obviously logistics, technical and assemblies, you need to be in the office, but some of the, you know, some of the more, um, you know, where you're speaking to customers telephonically or email or WhatsApp, you don't need to be in the office. Um, so I think that will have an effect on a lot of uh, organizations culture. I think it's, 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 I don't think we can predict how this COVID is going to play out. Um, but at the moment, there are certain people that don't feel comfortable going to the office. You know, when we're through COVID and, you know, we've got a kind of vaccine type scenario, it's going to be interesting to see if people are going to be willing to sit in traffic for an hour and a half each way, sure. you know, and, and maybe, you know, as organizations, we're going to have to be cognizant of that and say, well, there is an option. 
and then that adds other questions you know like what do you do with your workplace and you know do you have shared workspaces like a lot of organizations like microsoft have got had for some time now you know so it's going to add more questions to you know things like do you need canteens do you need shared workspaces what's the culture like you know some people work completely well with you know and they're very disciplined on their own other people need people you know mm. on a personal level you know I, I think it's a lot more efficient to sit at your desk and just grind away but you know i miss the human contact as i'm sure yeah. a lot of people do so i think it's going to be a bit more blended than it was before perhaps but it's, it's maybe difficult a, bit of to a hybrid of, model so to speak yeah um look distribution businesses need big properties but um i think one thing that is going to definitely change from a cu overall cultural point of view is, is that the you know, it's pretty obvious you know the, the the acceptance of you know remote working technologies such as this you know zoom and what have you but i think what it's going to do is it just plays to the importance of having a really robust e-commerce platform and we're accelerating that very fast now because if you've got a good e-commerce platform you know your customers are going to feel more confident and more willing to use that platform certainly after what we've seen in the last sort of 60 odd days you know, talking about technologies and you made mention of Zoom, which is what we're making use of right now, have you seen an uptake in any other technologies in your business that you might not have been using as much of before? No, I, th I think a lot, a lot of us use Zoom already. Um, you know, we've got a lot of people that, that do work remotely. You know, I'm one of those that commute. Um, you know, to Joburg from Cape Town. A lot of, you know, we've seen other uh, execs do that as well. You know, it's quite a normal trend. You know, Gary at Tarsus does it. Uh, a couple of other guys do it as well. So I think we've always been pretty proficient at an executive level with the use of Zoom. Um, the 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 sales team and the product team have definitely embraced Zoom. Email and you know sharing and you know. So I haven't really seen other type of applications we've seen a couple of monitoring pieces of software that that show us how much time we've spent online or how much time on zoom really but nothing really in distribution it's pretty much been email whatsapp and zoom but predominantly zoom and we had a staff meeting the other day i think we had 350 people on zoom you know oh. yeah you share you share your your powerpoint presentation we normally have a power hour once a month we did it with everyone it was great and every wednesday morning we have 40 odd people on every morning you know a sales meeting and i think the guys have, have really got proficient in it and it's the cultural it's like the sort of nuances of using zoom you know so mm. once you've once you're a proficient zoom user you know you learn you got to pause and that kind of stuff and yes. and it's interesting when you have a zoom meeting with a customer or a company that's not historically used zoom you know, there's kind of like some nuances that you've got to pick up, but most people have, have kind of picked it up now. I think so it's I, almost so that Zoom etiquette. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't mind the dog barking in the background sort of thing, you know. Yeah, it adds, yeah, it adds to the whole call. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, obviously in times like this, um, you know, sort of quite a radical economic downturn, but even in these downturns, we, we certainly see little pockets of opportunity. Um, have you identified any other areas of opportunity in your business that you think that you might apply a little bit more emphasis on now going forward? Look, so I think the fulfillment of, you know, e-commerce is definitely, you know, been a big drive for us and it's like a staged process for us. So that's, that's reinforced that. Secondly, um, obviously the demand for, you know, high-end client devices, you know, from a lot of call centers, discoveries mm. and that kind of stuff. Uh, we were always pretty strong in the tertiary space, but that's just exploded. Obviously, the provision of laptops to tertiary students. Um, I think what this has done is is that it's it's kicked off people's acceptance of cloud, and 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 mm. not necessarily having a hybrid model where you do have on-premise compute and and you know and some in the cloud. I think the companies that have embraced a complete cloud strategy have probably been vindicated to some degree. So I think. You know, our, our, our drive around our, our cloud offering, you know, with products such as Huawei and Commvault and, and Nutanix have really, um, you know, been emphasized to us about, we've actually got to accelerate that. Um, Hyperconverged has been a very strong play for us in the last, I mean, you know, you and I have spoken about this before, you know, two to three years, but we've definitely seen an acceleration in that space. So I think data center is becoming more relevant. Um, we haven't seen a big uptake in infrastructure yet, because that was more kind of building classified related. So we're hopefully going to see a bit of a, a burst in demand now. But yeah, in summary, you know, client devices 
you know, surge in demand, particularly in tertiary, uh, cloud, and then hyper converged. You know, the making that data center, being able to deal with the, the amount of data that's been thrown and probably a bit of compute at the edge as well. You know, mm -hmm. not everything super off, you know, deep in the cloud, more guys deploying compute at the edge. You know, we're seeing some of that as well. Actually, that message seems to be coming um, through quite a bit today because obviously I've uh, had a number of these calls and um, and edge is definitely a, uh, a prominent topic uh, at the okay. moment. Um, Tim, before we end off, um, you've obviously seen as a as a thought leader uh, in in this in the technology industry and um, represent a very large organisation. Is there any advice? that you could perhaps give some smaller business owners or, or smaller businesses um, around how to maybe navigate or identify or use this as an opportunity to maybe innovate um, through these uncertain times. So, I mean, the smaller businesses have the advantages that they can be nimble. And I think, um, you know, I read an example of a, a business that, that is a, a you know good example of that um, the other day, you know, as a fish, um, a business in Hao Bay that has been supplying restaurants for for for, for years, you know, uh, tuna and what have you. They, they they run a couple of boats, and they you know they supply you know pretty much distribution to the restaurant business. Obviously, restaurants closed for two months, so they got no revenue. And um, you know, so they put a website up um, direct to the end user. You know, a bit of tuna to you. Within three days, they had that running. They've now built a whole new business, which is probably a higher margin, you know, and a bit of a balance, you know, to the restaurant business. When the restaurants come back online, they, they could have doubled their business. They got a website up in three days. So, you know, we, we see a lot of resellers constantly reinventing themselves. Don't be scared to reinvent yourself. That's one thing. Um, on a on a cash flow balance sheet management side of things, you, you know, it doesn't matter how large you are, you know, um, you've got to look after your balance sheet. And if you cash negative, you know, at the moment, which everybody, it's not a shame to be then engage with your creditors, you know, um, you know, the bank crucial, take advantage of schemes like TERS and government back loans, talk to your bank, you know, build, uh, you know, a, a buffer in for three to six months, because that's how long it's going to take. Um, yeah. And then look after your OPEX means as obvious as, as, you know, as the sun coming up, but I'm sure everyone's aware of that, but look after the OPEX and, 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 you know, engage with your staff so that everybody's on board. You know, um, I think that's worked for us is to, we've, our culture's changed very quickly in the last couple of months, you know, talk to the staff, um, get their, get their view on how, you know, we can keep our OPEX under control, take some sacrifices, gel together and just have a re resilience, you know, not give up. So I, we see, we saw some companies just say, oh, it's locked down, you know, closed. Uh, you know that's not that's not going to help anyone so cash is the lifeline of it, any business so keep your cash flow ticking don't be afraid to ask big organizations to pay you up front you know um, be transparent with your customers as well as your creditors that you need to be paid you're a small business and you've got 15 people on the payroll you know but you know south africans are incredibly resilient that example i gave you that's happened million i mean we've seen We've seen it all over. So innovate and, and, and identify the opportunity. I mean, you know, reinvent yourself and start selling Zoom solutions. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know why not? You know, um, you know, sell high on laptops with webcams and, you know, head, headphones and, and monitors and goodness knows, you know, put a solution together and knock on doors and say, this is your solution, you know. Mm. Um, so innovate is, is a key thing, I think, for everyone. Brilliant. Some some really sound advice there. You know, sort of making sure that you look after that cash flow. Um, obviously innovation, being agile. So um, some really key and um, and solid points there. So thanks for sharing uh, your views there, Tim. And thanks yeah, indeed. thanks for thanks for 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 spending time with us today. I appreciate it. It's Pleasure. great to have you on here again. And maybe next time we'll be in person. Yeah, let's hope so. Good to see you, Dean. Thank you very much, and thanks for having us on. Thank you, Tim. You too. Okay. Cheers. Keep up. Cheers. Bye-bye, Dean. Bye. Cheers.